Good afternoon, I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotsMedia.com. The controversy surrounding the police's decision not to charge a motorist captured on camera doing stunts on a road in the corporate area was discussed at Cabinet yesterday. The Cabinet, chaired by Prime Minister Andrew Holness, met with Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson and Head of the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, Assistant Commissioner of Police Dr. Bishop Dr. Gary Welsh. A statement from the Office of the Prime Minister this morning said Cabinet discussed the importance of equal and consistent enforcement of road traffic laws. Cabinet reminded the police of the importance of government's zero-tolerance approach policy. Cabinet was also concerned about the maintenance of a public order and discipline on the roads. The Mercedes-Benz motor car was seen spinning around several times on Dunrop Robin Avenue before being driven off at high speed. Some members of the public have expressed outrage following last week's meeting between ACP Welsh and the motorist reportedly seen in the video. And the head of the Public Safety and Security Branch says come September 1, motorists will be feeling the full brunt of the law if they disobey the road code. He was speaking on Monday at the inaugural International Symposium on Traffic Crash Investigation and Black Box Analysis at the Caribbean Maritime University. When you come and you see that you have number 50 and we are now serving customer number 3, you can complain all you want. We are here to serve you. You might want to ask somebody ahead of you to exchange places, and that's quite OK. If you violate, expect to be served. ACP Welsh also pointed out, as he said, that motorists will no longer be stopped and ticketed along the roadways. He says starting next month, offenders of the road code will be taken, as he pointed out earlier, to a customer service center immediately after being caught. He says that new approach will help to reduce repeat offenders who fail to either pay or go to court. One woman is dead following a brazen gun attack this morning. TVJ News understands that the woman who was driving a blue Honda Motors car, that's a CRV, was shot multiple times along Patrick Drive in St. Andrew about 9 o'clock. It's unclear what led to the shooting. Investigations continue. And of course, we'll have more on that story as details become available. The government is moving to have more developments on the eastern end of the island. That's the word from Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Speaking on Monday, Mr. Holness said the government will be investing in housing in that section of Jamaica following the South Coast Highway Improvement Project. Once we have put that down, all the lands in that area become viable for development. So the government is going to be moving with the NHD and the National Housing Agency to start developments on lands that we own there or have intentions on. And we call on developers to start looking now to the east to develop the lands that are now made viable. PNP Vice President Damien Crawford has taken the government to task about a recent bill which was brought to the Senate. He was speaking at a recent PNP meeting in Clarendon. When they put the bill forward, they said that you are going to be able to invest $50 billion. But that not have nothing to do with the pension. Huh? That means business people will be able to borrow $50 billion. No, I'm not nothing against business people. But how you carry a pension bill, and the target is not the pensioner. The target is the business. You should have carried a business bill. And so we want to make money available to businesses. And one way is to make pension funds can invest. But you can carry a pension bill, and very little is in it for the pension. The Senate recently suspended debate on the tourism uh, pension workers' pensions bill, that's a tourism workers' pensions bill, which seeks to establish a defined contribution pension scheme for tourism workers. 
Another menacing storm is on track to slam the Caribbean, including Puerto Rico, which is still grappling with the devastation from Hurricane Maria. Tropical storm Dorian has intensified in the Atlantic Ocean with 60 miles per hour winds. Details from the CNN. Tropical storm Dorian really doesn't look all that impressive. It's a rather small tropical system that lies just to the east of the Lesser Antilles. But once it pushes through the Lesser Antilles into the Caribbean, we anticipate it's going to encounter more favorable conditions and actually increase in intensity. And as it does, by about Wednesday evening, it will be approaching Puerto Rico. Now let's go back two years, September 20th. 2017 and it was Hurricane Maria, a category four system that just devastated Puerto Rico from which they are still recovering. Well, this is expected to be a category one in the vicinity of Puerto Rico. Meanwhile, the National Hurricane Center has issued a hurricane watch and a tropical storm warning for Puerto Rico as Tropical Storm Dorian moved through the Windward Islands. A hurricane watch has also been issued for the Dominican Republic and the gov from the government and some parts of the island and a tropical storm watch for portions of its north and south coasts. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. More stories right after these messages. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Raft men in Berrydale, Portland, home of the Rio Grande, are lamenting the decline in business. There are concerns that things may get worse, even with the winter tourist season just three months away. TVJ's Janela Pursuis reports. A handful of tourists make their way down to the Rio Grande Valley. It's a fraction of what obtained a few years ago when business was booming at the Portland attraction. In fact, rafting on the Rio Grande was one of the selling points of the parish, but now it appears to be fading. This is summer, and we use our peak time from July till now. We haven't seen no farmer business right now. We used to have like a raft captain do like nine trips per week. The lowest a man ever do a five trip a week. No from July till now. You have some man do on the three trip a tourist until now. And it's not just the rafters. Residents living in Berrydale are also feeling it in their pockets. I'm a registered craft member right now. Me can't make a dollar. My little workshop just the right around this because this is where I live. But yeah. So what has led to the drop in tourists? Some believe it's a promotional issue. Uh, business very slow, you know, because it seems like they don't um, market the business and things like so. But I'm mean, tell a dog, I eat dog. Trust me right now. Others argue that it's because of poor roads. The road is in a deplorable condition right now. You know, and we are not getting the business because of that. A disagreement on the source, but the people are united in their calls for officials in the Ministry of Tourism to intervene. Janela Precious, TVJ News. Residents of Mason Hall St. Mary are slated to benefit from a major water infrastructure project which is scheduled to begin this year. TVJ's Ashane Masters has more. It's a daily trek to the river for residents of Mason Hall St. Mary to carry out some of their normal home duties. Why? the lack of water in their community. The residents say that for years, they have been pleading for their own water supply as the frequency of water in their community of Mason Hall was not adequate to meet their daily demands. The residents told TVJ News that they pay as much as $500 for a drum of water, but that is not sufficient. Tishan Powell says a pump house was established in the community some time ago, but she claims that is ineffective. As I get water on my line from December, and the pipe around slow down here, so. And sometimes we have, we have surrounding okay, community come to water to like Mango Valley, Hamilton, Moon Fellowship, and I'm water then come with like over 20 bottles. We have to wait for them. Miss Powell says while drought conditions are affecting the island, the water situation in her community has always been dire. But even when we're not in a drought, I mean, I think from the pump house, we can find it to the water system. And it's like, no. it's, 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 remember one Sunday morning, we come down here, we come down at the park, dry, dry, dry. Yeah, we mean since the pump house, me. This makeshift pipe is one way in which the community receives water. But it soon will be no more. 
This, as Member of Parliament for Western St. Mary, Robert Montague, has promised a much-improved delivery system. Mr. Montague, who toured the communities on the weekend, was accompanied by representatives of the Rural Water Supply and Water Resources Authority. The West St. Mary MP says the water infrastructure project is expected to cost $500 million. Of that sum, he says $270 million have been approved in this year's budget for the project. It's a major project which also involves the upgrading of the sources, White River, Bogue and Pottinger Springs. So it is not something that is going to happen overnight, neither will it take a week or two. But the important thing is that the project will start this financial year and it will bring relief to the people in the Days Mountain, Barry Fall, Erie Hill, Masonal, Grandstone, Wentworth. Mr. Montague says the design for the project is already completed and a tender is now out for a supplier to provide the pipes for the project. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Jamaica and other regional states are being urged to pay close attention to issues surrounding fires which have been destroying the Amazon forest in South America. Coordinator of the Institute for Sustainable Development at the UWI Mona, Dr. David Smith, cautions that the Amazon forest is extremely important for carbon dioxide reduction and rainfall. The Amazon rainforest has been on fire for the past three weeks, with hundreds of acres being destroyed. The Amazon forest, which spans eight countries, produces about 20% of the world's oxygen and plays an essential part in the fight against climate change. In a 48-hour period leading up to Thursday, there were more than 2,500 active fires in the Brazilian rainforest. Dr. Smith says continued destruction will have an impact on Jamaica and there are concerns. Produces oxygen and water vapor. Those of us in the Caribbean, a lot of our rain is generated by the rainforest. A lot of material for things like soil and so on are generated and then transported through the rivers and the seas to the Caribbean. So we would be concerned as people living in the Caribbean for those reasons. President of the National Association of Deans of Discipline, Samuel Smalling, is bemoaning the lack of resources to deal with children. Mr. Smalling was speaking to TVJ News at a capacity building workshop in Mandeville on the weekend. In my time when we went to school, there were only maybe challenges in terms of fist fights and so on. But today, our students come to us from varying backgrounds with varying, varying challenges. So now we deal with varying number of issues from um, weapons, from um, even guns sometimes, deans of discipline have to contend with in our various, it depends on where, which community the schools are in. Mr. Smalling pointed to another trend where children are hurting themselves. He's calling on the Education Ministry to provide more training to deal with mental cases. As we partner with guidance counselors and administration, the task is even getting more difficult as you know, we carry out our duties. From time to time, we have students who try to hurt themselves, and as deans, we have to get involved. So I would want to say to the Ministry of Education, sometimes um, the resources that deans of discipline are given to do the task uh, are not sufficient. We think that all deans of discipline, guidance counselors, etc., should be given um, some form of training in how to deal with these kinds of issues in, um, when they occur in our schools. And in sports, striker Corey Burke, who missed the CONCACAF Gold Cup in the USA, is in line for a return to the national team after being included in a local-based training squad for Jamaica's CONCACAF Nations League match against Guyana in Montego Bay on September 9. Visa problem has prevented Corey Burke representing the Reggae Boys in the United States, but with Jamaica's three upcoming games in the Nations League to be played in the Caribbean, the striker has been included in coach Theodore Whitmore's squad. According to Whitmore, it's tough leaving Burke on the sideline if he's fit. He's a, he's a Jamaican player. He's here. Um, he's doing some work. Um, again, he's on good fitting for us to bring him in to see what condition 
ease in because um, we need we need every player, you know, not, not just Corberg, we need every player to represent, you know, uh, uh, and we need the services of a, of a Corberg. So again, it's only fitting to see what condition he's in. And with the lack of goals in the national team, it makes it easy for Whitmore to call up Burke. We can't question um, Corberg's ability. We know what Corberg can do. We know Corberg um, can put the ball in the back of the net, no, no question about that. As for the man himself, it's a proud feeling being back. It's always good to put on a national colour, you know, being out um, of the World Cup. I'm now I'm back for, for uh, the Nation Cup. Hopefully, I try to get my fitness up and, you know, the coach will select me in the, in the final cut for the games coming up. Burke also thanked national champions Portmore United for helping him to stay fit. Portmore is, um, I think, is the best club in the country and for me, it's, it's a good thing for me to be, be chained with, with Portmore United, which I, I'm still chained with them at this moment. And now I'm here in camp with the national team. So it helped me a lot to, to keep my fitness up, as I said before. He says it's frustrating for him being on the sidelines. Every time I, I see my team, um, uh, the country playing, well, you know, I, I can't stomach to watch a game. So it, it's very frustrating for me. And while he gets ready to represent the national team, Burke still has to wait for an overseas contract to resume his club career. There was a few teams that uh, was interested in me, and because of the visa issue, they, uh, they're no longer interested no more. So I'm here waiting for, for, the, for the next move uh, on my agent, uh, which I, I, I contacted him earlier before training, and he said that he's waiting on some, some club that they uh, contact to finalize a uh, few paperwork. Jamaica are joined in Group C alongside Guyana, Aruba and Antigua and Barbuda. Denise Walters for TVJ Sports. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Do remember to join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.